Hey there, and welcome to the what's new in Fusion 360 design and engineering video for March 2022. There's a variety of new features this release, as well as a whole bunch of enhancements and fixes across the board. Let's get to it and take a look. Before we get started, here's your casual reminder to like, subscribe, and hit the bell or whatever you need to do to get your alerts for our videos turned on. We release new content all the time from tips and tricks to what's new. You'll find tutorials and even the occasional live stream around here as well. Trust me, it's all good stuff, and we want you to know about it. To start us out this release, let's take a look at some new drawing enhancements. First up, whole tables are now available. These tables automatically pull in whole data from the view on the sheet. That data comes from the whole features in your 3D design. This table includes a whole identifier, ordinate dimensions, as well as the relevant details like threads, countersinks, drill depth, that kind of thing. The whole identifiers on the view can be rearranged with automatic leader placements happening as well. Next up in drawings, revision tables, markers, and rev clouds. Now, even without using the manage extension, Drawings can have a revision table and associated on-view markers to help identify changes to the design. The drawing rev metadata can also update title blocks with the new rev indicator. Individual revisions can be hidden from the table to make a more compact look while not deleting the actual data. Also, the rev markers themselves are tied to specific revs. So if a revision is hidden from the table, the associated markers out on the drawing are hidden as well. Along with the revision tables and markers, we also have a new Rev Cloud tool as well. Lastly, for drawings, you'll notice some UI changes and quality of life improvements for surface texture, datum identifier, and feature control frame. In the design environment, you'll find several bug fixes and performance enhancements. For example, the timeline has received a tune up and now functions correctly with Windows in full screen mode. New for this release, we're launching our new design advice tool as part of the product design extension. This tool examines a design to see if it meets the right manufacturability criteria for injection molding. The analysis looks for thickness concerns, undercuts, draft issues, and knife edges. To access the tool, we just head to the plastic design tab, then over to the inspect menu. Once launched, the tool examines one body at a time and only needs that body and a pull direction to calculate its results. The results themselves are populated on tabs within the tool dialog box, starting with a summary of the issues found and then corresponding tabs for each issue type. If a design doesn't have one of the issue types, there won't be a tab for that one shown. In the summary results, if we click view details under each issue, we're taken to that issue tab for a deeper look. Here we see a polypropylene part. After running the design advice tool, we see there are issues across all four of the manufacturability checks. Each of the issue tabs shows us in great detail what those issues are, where they're located in the model, and also provides advice on how to prevent or mitigate the issue in the context of the design. As a part of the product design extension, this analysis tool is rooted in the plastic design rules and obtains its base guidance from the material selected in the rule. If you make a change to a plastic rule, simply rerun the design advice tool to update the results. It's worth noting that as of this release, the tool is best suited to simple injection molded parts with no side actions or other complicated manufacturing needs. And as always, Check with your manufacturing partners to ensure that the material and process data in the plastic rule for your design meets the real world requirements. Changing gears again, we have a great quality of life improvement in the generative design tool. With this release, we now have multi-export available in the Explore environment. This allows you to export multiple designs at once, up to four, instead of one at a time. The exported designs are only the last iteration, so if you need an earlier iteration, you need to go into the result, load the iteration you're looking for, and then export manually from there. Next up, we have a new technical support tool for Fusion 360. This tool, called the Fusion 360 Service Utility, is a new way to streamline technical support and automate a variety of recovery tasks that may be needed. In the past, tasks like resetting and clean uninstall were a little tedious, and so we decided to make a single source of action here. 
There are two ways to access the service utility. First, if your Fusion installation is damaged and fails to launch twice in a row, the utility will automatically launch to assist in correcting the problem. The second way to access the utility is to hold Control A on Windows or Command A on Mac during the first few seconds of launching. You know, during that cool splash screen that comes up. Hopefully you won't need it, but now you know how to launch the utility if you do. More details in the description below. And lastly, a big announcement about our in-product currency. Flex is a new pay-as-you-go option to match your team's needs. Just buy tokens and your occasional users will get access to our top products included with Flex. Here's how you can get started. Step one, buy tokens for your occasional users online or from your partner. Tokens are available for purchase in pre-specified amounts. Every product has a unique daily rate so check the rate sheet so you can choose the amount that fits your needs. Tokens last one year from purchase and do not roll over, so you can just buy more whenever you need them. Step two, assign your users. With Flex, there's no need for individual product assignments. You can assign an unlimited number of users to all products included with Flex or pick and choose which products they get. Step three, make it easy for your assigned users to access products whenever they need. All they need to do is open the product they need and the corresponding daily rate will be deducted from your token balance. You will be charged a daily rate until your user closes the product. Step four, analyze your token usage. We provide tools such as token usage reporting to give you better visibility. See how often each product is getting used so you can monitor your spending. We'll notify you if your tokens are running low so you can buy more and maintain access. Visit autodesk.com slash flex for more information. That's all we've got this time around. As always, be sure and check out the What's New blog linked below for deeper dives into the new features and bug fixes. Also, take a look at the What's New videos for electronics and manufacturing this release. There's some pretty cool stuff with component placing and electronics and some awesome arrange functions in manufacturing. Thanks for sticking around, and we'll see you on the next release of Fusion 360.